said, you're all in the right place at the right time. Welcome aboard. We're going to be talking about how to use GrantStation tools. I'm a member of GrantStation. I love it. And my name is Aretha Simons. But today, I'm the webinar producer here, and I get to introduce the speaker from GrantStation. I'm going to show you how you can engage today. We want lots of questions. I know there are going to be lots of questions, so feel free to type them in the Q&A. They have team members here from GrantStation, so you can feel free to type them in the chat as well. We're going to send you the video replay because there's no slides from today. He's going to show you directly from GrantStation's website. This is what I love. If you need the closed caption, go ahead and tap on CC at the bottom of your screen for closed caption. I'm going to move out of the way and introduce you to Jeremy Smith. He's the director of communications technology at GrantStation. You're going to love his voice. You're going to love what he's going to show you. Um, love there's my so voice. <laughs> uh, man, I'm telling you, he has a bachelor's in journalism. So, you know, uh, he, yeah, he, he's got this thing down pat, but he volunteers um, for nonprofits, does on air for a nonprofit radio station in Fairbanks, Alaska. Welcome all the way from Alaska, Jeremy Swift. Take it away, Jeremy. Oh, that's me. I am up here in Alaska. So, uh, Aretha, where are you at? We didn't we didn't say where you were from. Let's Orlando, do you really Florida. Quick. You're in Orlando. Are you in Orlando right now? Is that where I'm you're at? I'm in Orlando at? right now. Okay. So the temperature here in Alaska, and I'm in Fairbanks, middle of the state, is currently 43 degrees. So it is 43 degrees, and there was frost on the ground this morning. So that means fall is officially over here. So a uh, little bit of a geography note for you. If you ever have questions about Alaska, that's the trick. It is always cold. All the time. So with that said, we are going to go over everything you can do here at Grand Station. I'm going to go ahead and just hide a couple things here on my screen so I can see better. And I just want to make sure that everything is visible and it looks like it is. And let's go ahead and officially start and show you everything you can do here at Grand Station. So I'm Jeremy Smith again. I'm Grand Station Director of Communications Technology, and I host a lot of our online education offerings. I conduct some of our tours, and I handle Grand Station's internal and external tech and communications issues. Also joining me today are Carrie Glauser. She's our Director of Research, and Kevin Peters. He's our Vice President of Research. So I brought the two heavy hitters here today who do the research, who fill all of our databases with the actual information that you find about funders. So if you have questions, this is the best time to ask them. Kevin is going to be working overtime to answer all those questions. When I say overtime, I mean for the next hour. So for the next hour, you can ask all the questions you want, and Kevin is here to answer them. Now, what we're going to do today is we're going to provide you with an overview of all of our features, along with a look at how you can really find funders effectively on our website. And uh, I just want a quick note, you will be getting a copy of the recording, it will be sent to you, and there are no slides, everything is right here. And with that, again, feel free to ask any questions. Kevin will go ahead and answer those, or Carrie will answer them, and we'll probably even save a couple until the very end. So as they come in, um, if we don't answer it right away, we're probably going to save it to the end. We should be able to have about maybe five, ten minutes of time for the, at the end for questions. We can stay a little bit longer if necessary. But a quick note, if you do have any further questions after today, you can always email us directly at info and I'll be more than happy to help you out with that. So. Before we get into the actual grant searches, let me explain a little bit about what we actually do and show you around some of our major sections. So GrantStation features a set of searchable databases that are filled with current grant opportunities. We also provide tools and tutorials on grant seeking and writing. And then we also keep you up to date on the latest philanthropic trends. So in short, a GrantStation membership helps you find funding opportunities, helps you build a strong grant seeking program, and write powerful proposals so you can win awards to fund your specific mission. So question comes up all the time. How are you different from your competition out there? Well, one thing that differentiates us from other databases is our policy of only listing active funders. Now this means these are funders are only listed in our database if they accept unsolicited applications, letters of inquiry, or some other type of unsolicited communication. Also, GrantStation membership includes not only technically advanced tools, but handcrafted funder profiles with the human touch from Carrie and Kevin and all of our researchers. Our research team updates and adds content on a daily basis, so you know that you're seeing only the latest available information. So this way you know you're getting sort of a hot list of funding sources that have been vetted by our researchers and are actively accepting requests. 
So think of us as your personal backroom research team. We're pre-screening funders and feeding you the most relevant ones for your program or project. So quick note, you will be able to pick up a year of GrantStation access for only $99 on September 17th and September 18th. So time, time limited, you need to be a member of TechSoup. So if you're not a member, you better look into that right now, but it's easy to do and you can do it all through TechSoup's website. You can find more information, of course, on that here on our site, but of course, right on TechSoup's website, there's information about GrantStation and picking us up for $99 for a year of access. So keep that in mind, a year of GrantStation for $99. That's my hard sell, so there you go. We're gonna turn now to the process of really finding funding for an organization. How do you go about identifying the best grant makers to approach? So an important part of your membership and one we're going to talk about multiple times during today's tour is your custom dashboard, one of our major tools. You'll find that right up here at the top of the website. Click my dashboard. We'll go ahead and click on projects to get started and get in this area. What this allows you to do is really be more effective and efficient in your research. We really encourage anyone looking for funding to always do a little preparation before diving into the research. We've actually created a project already, so we can use it as we walk through and look at all the various features on the website. And that is right down here below Say the Chinchillas, which is a carry project. It's our animal welfare project for 2024. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this and walk you through what a project looks like. Now I'm showing you this approach, but keep in mind, you can do grant research any way you want on GrantStation, but this is the most effective way to do it. And this gives you the most features as you go about doing your research. So I'll go ahead and click on edit and open this one up. So for today's scenario, uh, we are a project that focuses on expanding pet adoption, humane education and spaying neutering and animal cruelty interventions. And for our, our organization, some of our animals are rehabilitated and they're trained as emotional support animals for seniors at independent and assisted living centers in the community. Now your project description doesn't have to be fancy. The description is really a high level overview of what you're doing with your specific project. Now, right here on this tab, our statement of need, this will be used to identify keywords, help guide your resource or guide your research as you're looking for resources as you go through everything. And also here under the budget tab, you wanna go ahead and itemize your budget needs, include brand names where possible, as these can really help you identify different product donations. Now, once you've done this step, you can think about the geographic scope of your project. Now our project is working within and throughout Pennsylvania to make sure we receive custom alerts based on our project information, we have to go ahead and select that. So right up here under project details, we'll click on geographic scope. And then we go ahead and select a specific state. As you can see, we selected Pennsylvania, also across the USA and North America. This means if anything is added that matches our other areas of interest, we'll receive email alerts whenever something is added to our database or something is updated. So it's a great way, this is why I encourage people to make projects, because then you get those email alerts specialized just to you. This isn't just our emails that go out every week, our insider and our international insider, our Canadian insider. These are alerts specific to your project. So once you set up a project, which doesn't take that long, you can get emails directly connected to what you need funding for. So as part of our primary research, which is the actual discovery of potential funding sources, we really encourage all of our members to familiarize themselves with our search terms. So if I go ahead and click here under areas of interest, you'll see sort of the beginning area of our search terms. So I'll jump into that section right now. Occasionally you'll be doing a search and it won't yield any practical results and often that's caused by not having the right search term. Now, our search terms that we have here contain descriptions of the key terminology used not only on our website, but it's the same terminology used by the grant makers themselves. And it really serves as a great guide when you're doing your keyword research. Now to use this area, you simply enter in a keyword that you currently use, and then you'll see which categories you want to check when you're searching. Then you'll make a note of this on your project tab, and now you know you're on the same page as the grant maker. So let's say we're looking for something, again, our focus is on, you know, animal therapy or animal, or yeah, let's just, let's just type in animal and see what happens when we do that in here. So we do animal, we click apply. 
So this will show you everything that we have related to the, the keyword of animal and what category it's under. So under the main category, environment and animals, we have animal welfare, which topics include animal abuse and cruelty prevention, animal shelter programs, animal protection, companion animal programs, humane societies. We also have under health wellness, animal assisted therapy service dogs. So then we know, okay, we need to look under these specific categories because this is what the funder calls that. So it puts you on that same page. So Carrie, this is my first time that I'm gonna call you out in today's webinar. How many areas of interest do we have? We have around 230 and that's uh, inclusive of types of support too. So there are tons of different areas that you can search through. And as you'll see, it's really easy to do that search. You simply click on and off various boxes. Once you've identified that specific search term, then you know, again, you're on the same page as that funder. And the options that you find, again, are open to unsolicited requests. So you can see if you're the right fit before you even start working on an application. We're all about saving you time as you do your research and we want to be a good value to you and that's our whole focus is to make it so you save time and you find the information that works for you and that's effective so let's go ahead and go back into our project and here we are in our areas of interest and again carrie said we're looking at over 200 of them and there are quite a few to look at and what's great is from this page you can simply click on this main little plus sign here and then you can hover over any of these and know at a glance what's included under that subcategory as you can see, I've already selected a couple here. I've selected animal welfare and animal assisted therapy and service dogs. Those are a good fit for my specific need. What you're gonna to wanna to do though, is make sure you think strategically about your project and the kind of impact it's gonna make. So even though animals are the initial beneficiaries of the project, seniors will also benefit from this. So we'll go ahead and add in mental health, as you can see right down here, because that's another area that's gonna help. And again, all of these are included as an and-based search. So if something fits this specifically, it will then be sent to you. So environment and animals, animal welfare, animal assisted therapy service, dogs, mental health, you will be sent alerts based on adding these specific key terms to your project. Now, you can also search by target populations and type of support, something that Carrie mentioned. Now, target populations is based on really who's your target. So we're focused on supporting seniors and the aging, but if you're doing a search, you can maybe find support just for children and youth, or maybe for low income or minorities, or maybe you're focusing on veterans and military affairs. You can find that as your specific population that you wanna target in. And again, this is going, honing in on this is gonna allow you to receive alerts that match your specific need. And also mentioned here is type of support. This is where you can find all types of support from say you're looking just for challenge grants or maybe funding for a film and video project or you wanna redo your website. Maybe you're looking for, oh, I don't know, technology, computers or software and you're already a member of TechSoup but you need to get a little bit more money. Maybe you need money to pay for TechSoup. This is where you can find funding that will allow you to do that. Startup funding, product donations, et cetera. I added a couple here such as equipment, journal operating support, product donation, and then training programs as well. And then finally, you have your keywords here. This is where you can enter in any other specific terms that relate to your work that haven't been selected or weren't listed under the type of support or area of interest. And you can note them because as you do your search, you can add them in specifically. Now I wanna go ahead and keep in mind that you wanna use search using our terms first. Again, these are the terms the funder uses before you add in any other keywords. And there's an example here that explains how that works, but you wanna make sure you're on the same page as the funder. So you start by using our words, then you can add in specific keywords. Keywords are really handy if you wanna narrow something down. So say you're doing work within New York and you wanna narrow it down to a specific borough, that's when you would add a keyword just for that borough and then pull up all the funders that give support in New York within that specific borough. So. With that, let's go ahead and look back into our projects that we have here. And let's talk a little bit more about what we've done. We've identified the most relevant search terms and ready to dive into doing research using our searchable databases. Now, we always encourage grant seekers to start research looking at government funding sources, as these sources can often provide most, if not all of the funding that you need. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of this really quick. We're gonna scroll up here 
and we're going to go ahead and click on find grant makers. This is how you can find the funding like I showed you earlier. And we're going to go ahead and start by taking a look at our federal section. Now you can search through this area by filtering for eligible applicants based on who you are, specific areas of interest that you're looking at, funding agencies, or even by application deadline. Now, what's great about this section is you can even search by keyword, of course, funding opportunity number, or the CFDA number. What this is is a front end to the listings from the U.S. federal government on grants.gov. And this is a great way to see what's available without even going to grants.gov, finding it, getting organized, and then when you're ready to apply to learn more about that specific funding opportunity, you can click on the link and take you to grants.gov. But what's also great, as you go about and do your search, and I'll show you something really quickly here, Let's say we're a nonprofit with 501c3 status. We click that link, we see everything that's available. Then we can add in more specific areas of interest, but you can save any of these to your dashboard at a given moment. So you can come back and look at this later if it seems like a good fit. And then we would next put in specific areas of interest that fit our needs. And again, our focus is on animal welfare. But if you look at a glance, there is nothing specifically fitting that that's available from the federal government. And this is what's so useful about this feature. You can see at a glance what's available on the federal level. But in addition to this federal-based funding, there is also state-based funding. I want to go ahead and show you that specifically now. So if we scroll up, we can click on our next option, which is the U.S. state government option. So we have a really tremendous resource here in our state database, and this really separates us from a lot of our competition as well. This section of our website provides members with a listing of agencies that provide support in the form of grants, loans, contracts, technical assistance, and more. So you start off by selecting your specific state. In our case, we're based in Pennsylvania, so we'll click on PA. And now we'll be able to identify all the potential local resources available for our organization. So Looking here, we can see what's available throughout the Commonwealth on a state level. They're broken down into specific categories. Very top, you have general resources. You can use these for help putting together your needs statement and seeing various census data. And over here on the right is a breakdown of the type of support, sort of a key to let you know what's going on. You have a date stamp when it was last looked at and when the next update is scheduled. So we can quickly look at environment and animals and see what's available in this section. And again, a quick scan lets us know that based on this, there's nothing that really fits our specific need. And we've done our state research. That's what's so powerful. We've done federal and state research because the funding options that are available in this section are important information to collect. Because when you apply to private funders, you can say that you have done your federal and state research. And in this case, you didn't find any options. And just like us, you can then say, at this time, there are no federal or state programs that can help us with our specific need. So this way, the funder knows you've done your homework, which really speaks to your credibility as an organization, and that private funding is really the only option for you. So once you've done this, you've completed your government-based research, you can move on to our U.S. charitable database. And again, you can do this in any order you like. We're not saying there's a specific way to do this, but we're showing you one of the best ways to go about and do your research. So I'm going to exit out of this, scroll up here, and again, we can always pull from the Find Grant Makers at the top to navigate, but also since we're already in our Find Grant Makers section, we can move directly into U.S. Charitable. So I'm going to go ahead and tag in Carrie and have her walk you through this section. Sounds great. Thank you, Jeremy. So here we are in the U.S. Charitable Giving section. And so this database has thousands of funder profiles, and that includes independent, family, community, and corporate foundations. There's corporate giving programs, faith-based grant makers, giving circles, associations with grant making programs. And then we even have some that are just listed as other sources. So the profiles are searchable by geographic scope, by areas of interest, types of support, like we mentioned earlier, by the funder's name, and even by keywords. In the content area on the left here, you'll see a brief guide that'll help you through the search process. And then on the right is the navigation area where you can enter your criteria. So under geographic scope there, you can choose to search for global grant makers giving to US organizations, which increases your collection of options. But for now, let's just click on Pennsylvania from our earlier animal welfare search scenario. And then let's choose national grant makers to add to that. So we're at 592 with just Pennsylvania. 
And then we add US, that jumps us up to 2,210. So as each criteria is added or subtracted, it will broaden or narrow the funding opportunities that are being displayed. This initial process of choosing our geographic scope allows us to cast our search net as wide as possible, combining national opportunities with state-based ones to really see just how many funders might be able to support our need. And then once we start selecting other criteria, our results will begin to narrow to funding opportunities that are a more perfect fit for our needs. And if you want more information on how the search operates, you can click on learn more in the upper right corner there. And with that, I think we're ready to select an area of interest from our earlier search terms. So let's select animal welfare, which is under environment and animals. So if we click on that, that narrows us to 146 results. Let's narrow this a little bit more and let's add something from types of support. How about general operating support since that's pretty common. So if we add that, that brings us to 40 results. And if we wanna narrow this search even more, we can remove national from the geographic search area by just clicking the minus button right next to USA and then focus on those funders that specifically given Pennsylvania. So here we're at 14 results. And I'd also like to just quickly point out the keyword search at the bottom of the page here. So while this is a powerful way to narrow your searches, say if you're looking for specific funding for a county or a borough and you wanna see what's out there, we suggest that you exercise caution while using it so that you don't narrow your searches down too much. Remember that the keywords you enter may not necessarily be the words that a funder would use. A couple other areas I want to focus on because we've added some new features and we are constantly adding new features to our searches based on input and based on, you know, just doing this because we've been doing this since 2000, no, 1999, since the 1900s. Or as the kids like to say, as in my son, the late 1900s. So if you go ahead and take a look at location of Grantmaker, that's another option you can search for. So just see the funders that are based in a specific state. And also you have the option to look at the type of Grantmaker. So maybe you're only looking for community foundations or foundation funds or trust. And if as you're doing your search, you realize, well, why is this grayed out? Why are these grayed out? Because based on the search terms you've entered up here, we automatically remove these from the list so you know they're not a good fit. There is no giving circle currently that provides support within Pennsylvania with a focus on animal welfare and specific type of support or general operating support. But if you want to get more options, as Carrie was saying, you simply go ahead and take a step back, add back in national, have fewer areas of interest, fewer types of support, and you can add as many as you want. But remember, the more you add, the more narrow your results get. So you want to start broad and then narrow into the specific amount that's a good fit for you. And also we have another feature that we added, again, based on our request actually, is you can search by application deadline. So maybe you're only looking for funders that are have a due date in the next 30 days. If so, you are probably that person who's written 12 grants this year and you're ready to go. I am not, so I'd wanna see what's available in the next 91 to 180 days. Or maybe funders without any deadlines at all. That's all I wanna see. So you can narrow down the results to whatever is your specific need, what fits with your grant seeking approach. And again, you can always search by funder name and of course the EIN number as Carrie mentioned as well. So if we scroll back up to the top, I'm gonna to add back in our national grant makers and see what kind of results we have. So we're back up to 40 results now. And if you look right here, we have an NA. So lets you know that we've actually taken a look at this profile. We know it's not a good fit for us. So as we go about our research, we know not to look at the Allerton Foundation. Even though they serve the Philadelphia area primarily and they have no app deadlines, I've already looked at this, it's not a good fit. So I don't need to worry about this one specifically for my specific need. But here's what I wanna take a look at and that's the American Fundraising Foundation. I believe this is the Golden Pair Award grants. And we can see when their specific deadline was, which was July 16th, and the 2025 deadline will be available in the spring. Let's go ahead and take a look at this specific profile right here. So this is what a profile looks like here on GrantStation. So on the right, you're gonna see uh, links to visit the website, links to any of their social media pages as well. You can save it and unsave it from your profile. You can mark it as NA in case it's not good. You can email it to yourself or you can print it as well. And the, here you'll see a breakdown specifically of um, 
information about what they're trying to support, uh, what their areas of interest are, and any specific application procedures. Here on the right-hand side, you can see contact information, the financial grant range information, who's eligible to apply, what type of grant maker it is, what their grant history is, who have they given to in the past. You can even find a direct link to the 990 form so you can see what they reported to the IRS as far as who they've supported in the past. So they use that for historical information and whatnot. And of course, once we're here, we can always save it to our dashboard. This one's actually already been saved to our dashboard. As you can see, I can unsave it. So we have one that's already ready to go that's gonna be a good fit for us that we know. So now it's probably a good point to take a look at the dashboard. So Carrie, could you walk us through that as I pull it up? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so here we are in the main dashboard section of the website. And we already covered the project section a bit earlier. So um, just as a brief overview, as we mentioned earlier, you can develop project descriptions, you can save your search criteria, you can save individual funders, and you can even track the status of your application process all through your own custom dashboard. So I'm going to have Jeremy pull up each of the sections in here, well, most of them at least, so that you can get an idea of what to expect when you're in here on your own. Okay, so we did cover projects already earlier. So we're gonna go to the saved criteria tab first. You can select some search criteria and then name and save your searches. Once that's in your dashboard, you can click the name you gave it to rerun that search. This allows you to remember the terms that were most effective in finding funders for your programs. So you can run those searches again in the future to see if there are any new opportunities available. Okay, so let's close out of that and have a quick look at the saved grant makers tab there. When you're looking at grant makers in a search, you'll see that you can save a funder to your dashboard, either from your list of results or directly from the profile itself. This tab here shows you all the grant makers that you've saved to your dashboard. You can see their name, the project you've assigned it to, the priority you've assigned it, their application deadlines, if they have any, along with any specific notes you might like to make. You'll also see something in the middle there called the decision matrix. So the decision matrix is a tool that'll help you prioritize your leads so that you're focusing on those with hopefully the likeliest possibility of success and the least amount of effort. The key is to figure out the potential return on the investment of writing a proposal and then managing the award. Jeremy, would you like to tell us a little bit about the decision matrix or show us? Actually, I'm going to have you do that, Carrie. I'm just kidding. I'm happy to do that. <laughs> so if we Thank click you. on, you have a problem. So what's great about the decision matrix, this is a tool that not many people know about. That's why this is tool talk. That's why this is your inside look. This is why you're getting a board with GrantStation. A lot of people don't realize this tool. And it's so valuable, especially when you are applying to grants and want to know the best way to organize your time. So we'll click on this one right here and I'll show you how the decision matrix works. It really, again, as Carrie says, just helps you prioritize everything. So you're focusing on those with the most likeliest possibility of success. It's based on a simple number system, zero to 15, you consider dropping them, 16 to 30, they could be backup funders, and 31 and up as far as points go, go forward with those applications. So you start off with your mandatory criteria. Do we meet their eligibility requirements? What does that mean if you're not sure? Yes or no? Is the funding consistent with our mission? Yes or no? If you answer yes to both of them, you're ready to move forward. If you answer no to either of them, this is not worth your time. Don't spend any time on this. And if you're not sure what that means, you can click, click on this link and it breaks down what that means and how that affects you as you go about doing your research. So then we get into our actual scored criteria. And this is really sort of subjective, however you'd like to do it. You'll be able to put in three as most favorable and zero as least favorable. And you can choose what point scheme you want, zero to three, as you go through it. You start with the funder's priorities. Are we in the geographic giving area? Well, for this particular funder, yes, we are. Do we address the funder's areas of interest? Yes, we do. Do we serve the target population? Yes, we do. Does the funder provide the type of support we need? And if we have any questions about this, we can click on these links and learn more about what this specifically means. And then you go through credibility and readiness. You go for your effort and timing. And then once you've gone through all of them, you'll go ahead and end up with a final score. And that final score, and let's we'll go ahead and save this one, is what's displayed on this page. That's your decision matrix. So you know, oh, this is a 37. The cutoff's 31. So 31 and up, I should move forward on this. This is a good one. 
So it's one that I should definitely add to my plan. And that leads us to the next section, which is the My Plan section, which is another tool that we have here in your dashboard. So Carrie, let's go to My Plan. Sounds great. Okay, here we are in the My Plan section of the dashboard. So this section is a list of those grant opportunities that you've saved for kind of a visual overview of the dates that you need to monitor to help you stay on track of your grant application submissions. You can track the progress of each opportunity, which then allows you to take your research and move it into action. So let's go into one of these plans here and have a look around. And that is the American fundraising record that we were in earlier. So we of course have the name of the funder. We have which project this funder fits, the priority of this application, uh, the status, such as if you've submitted an LOI or it's in progress or you've been approved, um, the amount of the request, and then there are multiple date fields below that to keep you on track when working on your applications. So think of the My Plan section as your grant central station, if you will, of keeping a visual look at the comings and goings of your grants. And on the main My Plan page, you can export dates to your calendar software or export all of the data as a CSV file for use in your favorite spreadsheet program. And you can export data from your various dashboard sections at any time as well. Just as uh, one final note here, we're always adding and incorporating members' feedback, so new features may appear in the dashboard at any time. And one thing that we've added, in fact, is you can filter by project. So let's say you are working on multiple grants for multiple projects. You can look at everything that's just with our Save the Chinchillas project. We apply and see only those funders that fit that need. We'll go back to our animal welfare project and see just those funders that fit that need that we've already gone through and established as good fits through my plan. And you know, this is a great way to stay organized as you do your research. And what's also really handy is take, for instance, the American Fundraising Foundation. Well, you know, it's not coming up until, you know, 2025. Let's go ahead and archive this. So we can archive this and then view archived projects. So then we can pull them back out of here at any time. So here's one actually, Carrie, this is from 2022. I did not follow up with you, I probably should have. So this is the All Stars Accelerator Program. Now we didn't do a decision matrix on that, so we'd probably go through and then assign it to a specific project. We can add it back to the plan and bring it out of the archive and then go forward. And you can save as many in your archive as you like. And this is a great way to, oh, well, you know, it's coming around that time again. Let me check my archive. Here's all the information I've already put together for it. I'll bring it back to the forefront and move forward on my application. So let me move back to my saved grant makers here. And actually, I'm going to take a look at another section that we mentioned earlier. That's our saved criteria. So I actually ran a saved criteria search earlier. And that's product donation animal welfare. So I'm going to go ahead and run this search right now. So I'm going to click on run. So since I've got the criteria already in place, I can come back in and run this search at any time and find something that's a good fit for my specific needs. And you can see here's the current search criteria already saved. I'm searching across the US and Pennsylvania, specific area of interest is animal welfare, specifically looking for a product donation. So looking at this, I can see five specific options that I have listed here. And one of them that stands out, as you can see, USA Global, USA Canada Global, USA Canada, here's a Punic corporate giving program. Now they give across St. Louis and Missouri and other communities with manufacturing facilities. It's like, well, why would I have this marked? Why would this be saved in my dashboard? But here is something important. And we put these notes in the geographic scope. Again, this is to save you time as you do your research. The product donation disaster relief program provides support throughout the US and the event sponsorship program occasionally supports large pet related events located outside of company communities. So this is a really good fit for us for that specific need. And we can click this link to learn more about the specific grant maker and see in greater detail what that specifically means. And of course, we can add this to our dashboard or we can mark it as an A if it's not a good fit, email it, print it, etc. So this is the power of using the search criteria. It saves you time as you go back and do those searches. So in addition to our US based grant maker listings, we also have three other unique areas to search through. That's our international and Canadian charitable database, along with our Canadian government section. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of a couple of things here and take us back into our search area. 
So if we take a look, here's U.S. Charitable, federal and state government we already take a look at. Let's take a look now at our international database. I know we have a couple people here who are doing work internationally. What these databases are, these are grant listings that are beneficial to U.S.-based nonprofits doing work overseas. So say you're interested in issuing, you know, addressing the issue of education, say in Nicaragua. Well, we'll start by selecting a grant maker gives them a specific continent, let's say Latin America. And then we can add in our specific search terms. So our specific continent or country in this case is Nicaragua. So I'll go ahead and click on that. So we've narrowed it down just to Nicaragua, as you can see right up here. And then we'll add in our specific areas of interest. So again, we're focused on education, but it's more of a general type of thing. So I'll check that box. And then we have all the results focused accordingly. If there's any specific information as far as the geographic scope of where they give, that's, that's quickly available and visible right here under geographic scope. And you can, of course, click the link to learn more about the specific funder. That's a good fit for you. So it works just like our U.S. charitable section. It's just focused on international-based giving. Our next section I want to show you is our Canadian charitable area. This, again, has profiles of grant makers provide support within Canada. So if you're working on an arts program, say in Nova Scotia, we'll go ahead and start by choosing Nova Scotia. And let's also go ahead and add in funders who give across all the provinces of Canada. And then we'll go to our areas of interest, go to our arts, culture, and humanities, and maybe our projects on art education. So I'll go ahead and click on that. And now we see we have 17 results that we can go through. We can narrow this down if we'd like, but 17 I think is a pretty good number to start with to see if something is a good fit. 150 seems like too many to me, so I like to go under 20 when I'm trying to do my searches. Find about 20 that are a good fit, and if I need to narrow it down more, I add more search terms. And if I want it to be a little bit more broad, I remove some search terms. So this is really how these databases work. You simply click on and off various boxes to find the best fit for your specific need. And it really comes down to having the right search term. So as long as you've gone through that search term section, you've found the right search terms, you'll have no problem as you go forward trying to find funding for your specific need. We also have one other section I want to quickly touch on, and that's our Canadian government section. This is uh, where we have listings of potential uh, national and provincial departments and agencies that are a good fit for you that are for financial technical assistance programs. This is just like the U.S. federal section. And you can also visit the National Opportunities page right here to find programs to give across Canada and then visit a specific province. For in this case, let's say we're looking at Nova Scotia at this point, which sometimes I completely have difficulty locating. But let's go ahead and shift it so I don't waste too much time. And <laughs> we'll take a look at British Columbia. And again, it's the same brown renown as our US federal pages. It's a breakdown showing you everything available within that specific province. So this is another feature that we offer that separates us from our competition. We carry a large list of Canadian based and Canadian specific funders. So I'm going to go ahead and head back to our home page. The way to do that is to click on the big logo here. So I'm going to exit out of a couple of things here, scroll up and click the big logo and go back to the home page of our website. Now, although we really pride ourselves on leveling the playing field through easy to use, time saving searches for funders that are actively engaged, we also offer in depth long term guides for building your grants program. And that's what our build strategy section is all about. Our build section provides a complete walkthrough of articles that will help you build a solid grant seeking strategy. So you've assembled this list of potential funders. This is known as primary research. You're ready to now begin secondary research, which is seeing just how good of a fit the potential funders are. So as a part of secondary research, you'll wanna research the grant maker, generate questions to ask to help determine if they're really the best fit for your project. And the build section is all about how you do that. How do you find time to do this? How do you deal with the grants if you're only one person, how do you go through this? How do you create time to do these things? How do you create a grants calendar? How do I assemble a grant seeking team? Why would I assemble a grant seeking team? How do I manage grants? That's all answered within our build strategy section. These are easy to follow articles explaining all the different types of web research to do, how the IRS 990 form fits into secondary research, uh, what are in-kind gifts? How do you use those effectively? How to find that time, which is the biggest problem I think we all have, and lots more. And specifically, part of that lots more is a couple of our tools that we have. And one of them I want to talk about specifically is the benchmarker. 
So that's right here. You can find that link. And I'll go ahead and click on that right now. Now, the benchmarker is based on information that's pulled from the annual state of grant seeking survey. We'll talk about that in just a second. And it's a resource that can really strengthen your ability to secure grant awards by providing a realistic framework for your grant seeking plans and goals. So you can use this report along with our other tool I'm gonna to show you in a second called the R3 to set grant program objectives, which define how much to pursue and from which types of grant makers. So if we scroll down here, you can see that we have really easy to approach. What's your annual budget range? Let's say I have a small budget under 100,000. And what's my mission focus? I'm focused on arts, culture, and humanities. Let's see a basic report. And you can, of course, customize this by adding in more specific information, but I don't have all the time in the world, so I'm just gonna do a quick one right here. You can, of course, print this out at any time. You can export it, and you can then save it to your dashboard, which is very handy. You can come back and see it again. But you can see at a glance, based on the small budget, Focus on arts, culture, and humanities, the majority of the organizations that took our survey were, you know, 11 to 100 years old. There were very few that were one to five years old. So it's just a good idea to see the, the numbers, the stats, what's happening. Well, how many people tend to be paid staff in an organization of this size? You can again see at a glance, one to five tend to be paid staff, but fewer seem to have the majority the larger and more people there, fewer people are paid. It's a great way to see where you are at and compare yourself to other organizations. You can even narrow it down to what percentage of your organization's grants are recurring grants. Where did you get funding from? What, what type of organizations were providing you with funding? Um, how many grant awards did your organization receive in 2023? Three to five, uh, none. Um, what's the range of the grant awards you received? If you want to see what's going on in the world of fundraising especially with grant writing if you want to find out what your people in the similar fields are dealing with and what results they're having this is an excellent way to get that information and that's all the benchmarker it's included as a part of your membership but another feature that's included with your membership is the r3 tool so i'm going to show you that one we go ahead and click on build strategy it's actually an option right here it's the r3 which is known as the revenue review and report and it really gives you an idea of how to grow your grant revenue and broaden your mix of funding. And it's a report that you can see or you can show to your leadership that's easy to read, accurate, and visually appealing. Uh, to run a report, you'll see a copy of your operating budget with a breakdown of grant awards, sort of the amount and source of where it's coming from. It takes maybe 10 minutes of time. You'll enter in your specific current amounts, your projected amounts, or both. And then from there, you just run the report. So where do you have grants revenue coming from? Local businesses, corporate giving programs, family foundations. Maybe I'm getting funds from donor advised funds or from other grant sources. But maybe I have funds coming from special events or major donor income, earned income or endowment income. Maybe planned giving income is coming in or I have some of it projected. Once you put this information in, it'll generate a report. And since I've actually already ran this, if I go to my dashboard and go to reports, I can actually go ahead and show you what I did. So I'm going to go ahead and show you one that I did, which is current and projected. So I'll go ahead and view that. Of course, you can edit this as new, make adjustments to it, and run a new one at any point. You can name it accordingly. But here's one that I ran, comparing current to projected. And then right down here, it starts getting fun. Well, it would be fun if I, uh, there we go, it pops in. It's our current revenue pop-up. So we see our total revenue and where it's coming from. We see our projected revenue, where it's coming from our current grant revenue, where it's projected to be in the next year, the current non-grant revenue and projected non-grant revenue. And this is the most valuable part. You then get recommendations based on the numbers you've entered. And it gives you ideas of how to diversify your portfolio. So you're not relying on any one funder for all of your funding, because if that funding source dries up, then you have no funding for your organization. This is giving you tips and ideas to Keep in mind as you're going through it. And again, it's broken down based on what you've entered above. So here's, an, for instance, under corporate foundations, it says, according to Giving USA in 2019, giving by corporations grew by 13.4%. If you have an ongoing relationship with a corporation, it may be wise to increase your next request by 12 to 14%. This is an incredibly powerful tool that very few people know about. 
And it's so handy because it gives you a nice visual representation, which of course you can print out, save, show to your leadership and say, yep, this looks good. And here's another thing, that other tool I showed you, the decision matrix earlier, someone may come to you and say, hey, I found a great grant, you should apply for it. You can say, great, let me run it through the matrix. And here's the thing that I didn't mention earlier. If you have a funder that's specific to you and isn't in our database, you can actually add that yourself to the dashboard. It's just for you, no one else can see it, and you can use all the tools I've shown you with a specific funder that works just for you. We try to make things easy and make your time worthwhile and save you time, and that's what we try to do here at GrantStation, and that's why you can do that within your dashboard. So the dashboard is probably the most powerful tool we have here at GrantStation, but the R3 is, I think, the one that's most overlooked. This is a really powerful and fun tool to use. So I encourage you to take a look at this, the R3. Again, it's part of your membership, so I encourage you to do that. So click on our big logo. Let's head back to the home page again. After we've looked at our build strategy section, let's move on to our write section. We've gone through this whole section and made all kinds of modifications to it. And one of the biggest things that we've done is we've made it so it's easy to use and you know what to do. We have a getting started section, which may sound like it's for novices, but it even seasoned professionals may want to take a quick look. You can maybe pick up some new ideas. But again, if you're brand new to grants, guess what? You're covered. Getting started walks you through everything. Understand the submission process. How do I organize my documents? What's a proposal writing schedule? What's my audience? How do I deal with US federal grants? And then we have proposal development, developing a plan. How do you establish credibility with your organizational background? How do I write a compelling needs section? How do I build an approach that gets noticed? You know, what's a project budget and budget narrative? What if I wanna see what a full proposal looks like? Well, guess what? We have full proposals that you can view as a member, award-winning proposals, in fact, over, I believe, 60 of them as part of our winning grant proposal competition. It's free to enter. We offer it pretty much every other year. And let me go ahead and show you this really quickly. You can actually download proposals. These were these were all award-winning proposals. They all won awards. So you can see what's currently working. You can read the full proposal, um, both government and private sector. They're broken down. And you can see the name of the organizations. And these are all the people who have submitted. We've been doing this since 2013. So there are years of proposals here. But what's great is you can see what's working right now. And this is also very unique to GrantStation, having access to a full proposal that you can download and see at a given moment to see what's currently working. And so you can craft your proposals to follow that same kind of approach. So in addition to all the great stuff I've shown you in the build and strategy and, and write proposal section, we also have online education webinars such as what you're on right now. This is something I spend a lot of my time with and I'm a part of the online education team here at Grand Station, but we have a lot of different webinars available. We have live webinars. We have a 30 minute sort of quick dives called our target eds and those are available on Mondays. We have recorded webinars for what's been offered in the past. We have web-based courses that you can take sort of on demand and at your own pace. And we even have a turbocharged video course, which walks you through the entire process of writing a grant from finding it to putting it together, to writing it with video examples and downloadable templates. That's also something that we offer. So let me take a quick look here at live webinars and show you what we've got here. This is where you will find all types of webinars. These aren't a part of your membership. They are separate from your membership, but they can cover all types of topics and they are often great ways to do group-based training. So we have one coming up about streamlining your services. We have another one about the art and science of successful solicitations, things about uh, how to fuel your mission with successful grant proposals. Here's that target ed I mentioned about nonprofit growth and sustainability. But we also have lots of free webinars. Here's one coming up on October 7th. Should I hire a grant professional or do it myself? This doesn't require organization membership, but it can be tracked what you've attended and what you've taken within your uh, dashboard. I completely forgot the word of it for just a second, but all the information of what you've taken is there. And for all of our webinars, you receive a full recording as well as access to the presenter's notes. And those are fully accessible for more than five to 10 years. Basically, let me know and I'll make sure you have access to a webinar at any given time because I'm responsible for that. But we have a large, large range of webinars that cover every single topic you can pretty much imagine from looking at money that comes in, going into QuickBooks, to how to engage your board in fundraising, which is a problem many of us have run into. 
we have usually have a webinar available that covers that specific situation and they also come with gpc certification in many cases so a great way to get that continuing education credit if you need it as well so in addition to our online education section if you are interested we have a public resource section this is available to everyone and this is where you can find our pathfinder tool which is another great tool that we have and it's really a freely accessible library that provides profiles on top quality resources in grant research writing and management as well as strategic planning you start by selecting a specific topic let's say i'm interested in fundraising i'm looking for a specific format i just need to find blogs on fundraising and then of course you can save any of these to your dashboard as i mentioned earlier but you can quickly find resources that you can check that'll be handy and helpful for you based on your specific need so this is our pathfinder section there are thousands of resources in here not just things on grantstation but from all across the web that are powerful and helpful that's really there to help sharpen your skills and grow your career within the philanthropic world now, in addition to the Pathfinder, which is another tool that we have in our public resources section, we also have our newsletters, our Organization Insider, which goes out weekly, our Canadian Insider, which goes out monthly, and our International Insider, which also goes out monthly. Each of them featured 10 distinct funding opportunities broken down into three different categories, and they are filled with all kinds of great information and put together, in fact, by the person on this webinar today, Kevin Peters. So if you have any questions, comments, or complaints, direct them all to Kevin. He'll be more than happy to deal with them. I'm just kidding, direct them to me. I'll take care of them. In addition to everything I've shown you here, we also have our GS Insights blog. This is uh, featuring the thoughts and observations of our staff, CEO, and guest writers. And we also have our state of grant seeking, which I mentioned briefly before, which is another important feature that we have here. This is our survey that goes out on a yearly basis. You can actually download that report for free. You can download the key findings and you can see the charts from it specifically. But this is where you can find really handy information, such as the median size of the largest individual award ranged from 10,000 for small organizations to 2.2 million for extra large organizations. You can see that uh, if you apply for at least three grant awards, that increases the frequency of winning an award. Only 9% of organizations that submitted three to five applications won no awards. This is the kind of information you can find. If you like stats, if you like digging into like, what's the percentage of this or that? The benchmarker is for you. It breaks down everything based on the over 2,000 to 3,000 people who take our annual survey. And it's a great way to figure out what's going on in the world of philanthropy. And specifically, what should I keep in mind when I'm doing grant seeking? What's a good number of funders I should apply to? What's a good number of grants I should write on a given year? All of this is included within our Pathfinder tool. So and not within our uh, city of grant seeking, which is a part of our Pathfinder tool set that you can again find under public resources. And finally, I want to show you one last thing that we have here. And after taking a look at all of this, we also have our um, track success feature. And this is long form articles, interviews with various professionals, figuring out what's going on in the coming up in the world, coming up in the world of fundraising and grant seeking. This is a really powerful archive of magazine style articles that you can dig into and get access to completely for free. So I'll click on our big logo and head back to the home page. And one last thing to remember is if you're doing a search for funding for any kind of project, it's really important to identify the best grant maker to approach. And using GrantStation allows you to really apply your time where it's most effective and efficient in your specific search for funding. So now that we're back at the home page, I think it's time to tag in Kevin to start so you can hear his melodious voice and we can start answering some questions that may have come in. Well, Jeremy, I don't have the uh, radio training that you do, so <laughs> I probably won't have such soothing dulcet tones as you. Uh, it's been a great webinar. I feel like a lot of the questions have been um, sale and purchase related, not a whole bunch of nuts and bolts questions, but we do have some of those. One, I want to go to Carrie. Carrie, this is a topic that comes up a lot with nonprofit organizations because they need this type of support. Some folks want to know, are there general operating grants out there available? Uh, yeah, definitely. 
Um, I know they can be a, a bit more difficult to um, obtain, but we've seen an increase in those being offered since the pandemic. So that's great. But um, yeah, as Jeremy just showed you, if you go under types of support here, it's uh, there's a click box about midway down. You just click on that and that'll show you everything that um, has general operating support. So there's there's a lot of options. We have almost 3,000 just here, so. Great, thank you, Carrie. And, and as Carrie mentioned, we did see like quite a few funders um, in the wake of the pandemic actually jettisoned their focus on program support to go more towards general operating support. I know for years that was really difficult for folks to find, but that tide is really changing and that's gonna get um, easier as the years go by. Jeremy, I was wondering if you could do the old log out trick and show us like, I'm not a member of Grant Station, but I wanna know how many funders are there in my program area? How can I do that even if I'm not logged in? This is a secret that only everyone right now is learning. Just kidding, I tell us to everybody. But it's a really cool thing you can do. And I made sure that we added this when we redid our website about 10 years ago. So click on Find Grant Makers. It says, you can see, I'm logged out. Let's go to US Charitable. And oh, it's a member feature. You have to become a member. OK, or do I? So let's come over here. I'm in Alaska. I'm looking for support for a media project I'm working on. So I clicked on Alaska. OK, oh, funder name and link only available to members. But I am getting a number of results. Well, let's add in National Grant Makers. OK, oh, wow, that's a lot of results. Let's add in my specific area of interest. Again, I'm focused on a media for a, well, let's say I'm radio focused. So I've added in those two things. I'm looking at 32 specific results. Now I can't see them and I can't save them because I have to log in as a member, but I can see how many there are. So based on my areas of interest, this is why I'm really stressing once you have the search terms, it not only works for GrantStation, it works for anybody out there, even our competition. And you can figure out all those search terms right here on GrantStation. All right, excellent. Then the next question I had, Jeremy, actually this one, Aretha, we're gonna throw one your way. Um, yeah, some folks, make Aretha do it. <laughs> some folks are um, consultants, uh, grant writers, whatnot. Do you need to be a nonprofit 501c3 to use the TechSoup sale? That's a great question. And what is Grant Station's requirement for that? Do they require, require that you have the 501c3? Because it goes by what our partner requires. But I don't think um, it's 501c3. No, Grant Station does not have a requirement for that. We have plenty of consultants. Um, other organizations, um, you know, individuals as well. So we don't require a 501c3, but I didn't know if that was a, a requirement for TechSoup itself. TechSoup, oh, someone... you, you can purchase GrantStation. It, we go by what our partner requires and the requirements is usually under the description of the partner. So if the partner says you must have 501c3, then you must have 501c3. And so if Grant Station says you don't, then you can purchase that without the having the 501c3. All right. Thank you, Aretha. And then someone, I'm, I'm going to give a little plug for myself here. Someone in the chat <laughs> is asking, I know that Grant Station hones in on funders that accept unsolicited inquiries. Do we have resources for figuring out how to get on the radar, radar of large funders that don't accept unsolicited proposals? I actually wrote an article uh, a month ago addressing that, and that would be in the uh, Grant Station Insights section. It should be right there, approaching the unapproachable. That's an article about how to reach out to those closed door grant makers that we do not profile in Grant Station. Uh, really, a lot of that's going to come down to interacting with board members, trying to get on their radar. It's going to be a lot more work for you. A lot of what Grant Station offers is targeted for organizations with limited resources. But if you do have the bandwidth to try to make those personal connections, this article here will give you some guidance to that. Jeremy, 
what do we have in the dashboard that would be sort of like teamwork functions that would help folks with the writing process? Like, is there a way to assign projects or to specific folks, um, you know, assign a task to certain people? Not specifically. It's really more of a self-guided one person type of approach, which is why we really encourage people to use it to use their membership just for for one person because it can get a little complicated and we haven't really worked in that direction to set this up as like a way to distribute tasks like a slack type management or some sort of you know agile program for applying for sending this to that person so not really that kind of approach is what we're looking for here it's more of you know make the project and then you add specific criteria you add uh, grant makers and then you create it to your specific plan so there isn't a way to do that specifically, but interesting idea, but doesn't really seem like what we're going to try to focus on. Yep. Thanks, Jeremy. And sort of hand in hand, someone was asking, what about content assistance and writing, like saving template content or past submission content for reuse? I know, uh, I'll dive in first. I know a lot of folks actually use the project function as sort of a way to you know, get their ideas down. A lot of the stuff that you put into your project are things that can be copied and pasted then into your ultimate um, grant application, particularly the description and statement of need. If you want, you can give those things titles like Animal Welfare Project Draft 2024, which then you can use to reference next year when you um, go in to apply for those things. So you can use that project page to sort of hold all that information. Jeremy, do we have any other like content spots where people can save things? Um, a lot of places I mean, that Carrie mentioned that you just mentioned is everything you enter in here can be exported to a CSV file that can be used. So majority of what we're focusing on isn't for you to upload information, but it's more just create and assemble, then you can download it yourself or keep it in your profile. There are some other organizations we recommend that you may, if you want something that will organize your documents, keep tidbits of information that you can reuse for other funders and whatnot. A good one, one of our partners is Grant Hub. There's lots of information you can find out about them. They offer that kind of service and kind of feature. And again, we're really about organizing it, getting all in one place, so then you can get forward with actually applying for your funder. Okay, and then I think we need to hand it back to Aretha. She needs to make a correction. Yes, I do. And thank you, Rosemary. I do want to make one correction. So on our um, catalog, it will say you must have a 501c3. You, you don't require a 501c3, but you know that you have to have a 501c3 to be a member of TechSoup. So going back to your question, do you need the 501c3? So yes, I stand corrected on that. You need the 501c3 in order to get this discount because that makes you a member of TechSoup, right? That is All correct. Right. So for those folks who aren't 501c3s, if you want to follow the GrantStation homepage or sign up for our GrantStation Insider newsletter, you then will get emails when we have our sales that aren't through TechSoup. They are not quite as good of a deal as through TechSoup, which is by far our best deal of the year. The best. But the we best. do offer um, a pretty good rate on our GrantStation sales for our individual contractors, government agencies, those folks who aren't a library or a 501c3. Now, we also did have someone ask, um, one of our international nonprofits, can they still purchase through the current sale if I'm an international nonprofit? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, I assume yeah, sure. so. <laughs> yeah, no, there, there's absolutely no problem at all. If you, you could be anywhere in the world, you could even be in space if you want, and if you need access to GrantStation, you have op, you have access to the sale um, as long as you are a member of TechSoup. Again, with the 501c3 status, you can pick it up that way. If you want GrantStation separate, maybe you're not a 501c3, as Kevin was saying, just watch our homepage. We'll more than likely have a sale coming up, and you can take advantage of any price at that point. So as long as you're a member of TechSoup, you can take advantage of this $99 deal. All right. Then a couple more questions. I know we're running out of time. This one's important. Someone asked, does GrantStation show grants that require invitation by the grantor? I just want to clarify that um, we do only list organizations that have some sort of open component. However, that's not necessarily a proposal. It could be a letter of inquiry or it could just be introductory emails. 
we go through a foot in the door sort of mentality. Like if the funder allows you to reach out to them to get a foot in the door, we will list those funders. But if the whole thing is by invite only closed door, we do not list them. So you will see profiles in the database that they will have a listing saying the pro proposals are invite only, but those same ones will then also have an open LOI part of the process. So that means anyone can send in the, the letter of inquiry, but the next step is invite only. So you will see that, but the funders we list definitely have that um, in public or open to the public component. And then Jeremy, uh, here's an interesting question for you. We do have a library program where select libraries throughout the country offer GrantStation to their clients. If you're a library listening, you should get GrantStation to offer to your clients. However, if I'm sitting in a community, do we have like a master list of which libraries are signed up at all? That we don't have. Um, we've Historically, we've had a lot of access in libraries, but more often than not, if the library has access to GrantStation, it would be announced or they'd be aware of it there. But we do have a library access program, separate from everything today, so we're not going to focus on it. But if you have a local library and you're like, I, I kind of like you guys have GrantStation, we have a library access program that they can go ahead and look into, and that's available under our partner programs that we have listed here. All right. And with that, I believe we've answered all the questions. If somehow I missed it, there were so many of them, but I appreciate you folks asking. Uh, feel re free to reach out to us at info at grantstation.com. Also, Jeremy's pulling up the contact info. We have live folks on the phones during the hours listed. You can even send us a fax. Only one person has ever done this at my request, and it was a bit of a joke, but we even have that capability. Reach out to us if you have any questions. Uh, Jeremy, Aretha, or Kerry, do you have any closing comments you'd like to add? I'll start first. Thanks again for your time. We really appreciate it. Hope you take advantage of this September 17th, September 18th. $99. Everything I've shown you today, full access. And even more important, you'll know that you're saving time to do your grant research. Thank you, everybody. You'll get the recording later today. And feel free to fill out the survey that's going to pop up when you close out the screen. Thank you, Jeremy, Kevin. Thanks, everybody. Yes. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.